If you want better insulin sensitivity, less insulin resistance, decreased anxiety, and improved fertility, as well as information on whether inositol helps you with weight loss or not, you've come to the right place. That's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. Here's the agenda of what we'll cover. First, we'll talk about what is inositol, then we're going to cover how it works, and finally, whether it uh, should be used for, for weight loss or not. But before we get there, who, who am I to be talking to you about this? My name is Igor. I'm the author of seven different books on exercise and nutrition, including Type 2 Diabetes Reversal Secrets, The Mental Health Prescription, and others. Additionally, I'm a personal trainer who works with lots of people who have both PCOS as well as anxiety and depression. Now, before we start talking about inositol, I have to give a, give a quick disclaimer. The disclaimer is this. Please talk to a pharmacist first before, talking, uh, before taking inositol. Why? because inositol may have interactions with certain medications. They're not all positive interactions and it could make you, uh, it could cause certain, uh, certain symptoms if you're, if you're having negative interactions. So talk to a pharmacist first. With that out of the way, let's talk about what is inositol. Inositol is simply put a vitamin. It's one of the B family of vitamins often considered to be vitamin B8. How does it work? There are two mechanisms by which it's thought to work. One is through the breakdown of carbohydrates. Uh, whenever you eat food that contains carbohydrates, what happens is blood sugar rises. When blood sugar rises, insulin rises. When insulin rises, blood sugar falls. It's a healthy, normal, desirable effect. In PCOS, where you have insulin resistance, what happens is blood sugar rises. Insulin rises, but blood sugar doesn't fall or doesn't fall enough. And so by taking inositol, it can help you with a breakdown, with the, uh, with the reintroduction of insulin sensitivity. The other mechanism by which inositol can work is by the production of neurotransmitters. What are neurotransmitters? Neurotransmitters are brain chemicals. Uh, collectively, they're responsible for things like mood, energy, appetite, and so on. The two where it really plays a role are serotonin and dopamine, hence its effects in mental health. And so if you do want to improve your PCOS and or your mental health, there is one commonality to both anxiety and PCOS, and that is blood sugar. Uh, blood sugar is high in both cases, um, and stuff that is low. There are some kinds of imbalances with PCOS. Um, with PCOS, what happens is blood sugar is usually high. With anxiety, and there, there could be hypoglycemia or low blood sugar episodes. But in either case, if you're able to blood balance your blood sugar, one way to do that is with inositol, you're able to improve both PCOS but also anxiety and depression. Now, there are two types of inositol. There is myo-inositol, and there is something called d chiro inositol Chiro is spelled C-H-I-R-O. And what dosages should we take them in? Well, usually it's best if we combine the two for PCOS. For anxiety and depression, it's not quite known whether d chiro inositol does anything yet. But what are the dosages? For something like PCOS, the dosage of myo-inositol should be somewhere between 200 and 4,000 milligrams per day. Whereas with d chiro inositol, somewhere between 5 and 10 milligrams. The ratio is important. It should be somewhere between 40 to 1 myo inositol to d chiro inositol. So again, the dosages are for myo inositol 200 to 4,000 per day, and for d chiro inositol, 5 to 10 milligrams per day. Now, if you're wondering, does myo inositol or does inositol in general help with weight loss? The answer is a little bit and not for everyone. In one study where researchers gave um, women with PCOS myo-inositol, what they found is that the women who were mildly obese, they lost a little bit of weight. They went from a BMI of 35.2 to 34.6 in a 12-week period. But that's just them. The ones who were severely obese, if they had a BMI of over 40, they didn't seem to lose weight. Also, it didn't, it didn't help women below 30 um, a BMI of 30, lose weight. So it doesn't seem to be a very effective weight loss tool. It might help uh, via other mechanisms. If you want to lose weight, there's probably better ways to do it. Um, and uh, that's essentially whether um, inositol works for help with weight loss or not. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe to this channel and like, uh, click the like button. Thank you very much.